Turkish Airlines presents Business Africa. Bonjour à tous. Welcome to this new episode of Business Africa with me and Dea Yoka, your host for this week. Here are the headlines. As climate funds take center stage at COP28 in Dubai, Africa is turning to new solutions. Five African countries have made the move to launch banks specialized in climate finance. In Uganda, a mobile application is enabling farmers to hire equipment and labor at the click of a button. And finally, in Morocco, the used car market is booming. Besides creating jobs, it is also having a positive impact on the local economy. With the support of the African Development Bank, Egypt, Morocco, the Ivory Coast, Rwanda and Benin plan to launch banks specialized in climate finance. Why? Well, because the funds from rich countries, the major polluters, have been slow in coming, while at the same time the African countries' needs for climate finance are steadily increasing. Favoring their own resources, five African countries have initiated the creation of banks specialized in climate finance rather than relying on hypothetical international financing to adapt to climate change. Egypt, Morocco, Benin, Côte d'Ivoire and Rwanda have embarked on this innovative initiative under the auspices of the African Development Bank, AFDB. The aim, they say, is to bridge the climate financing gap. To date, the most advanced project is that of Rwanda. With $142 million already mobilized by the AFDB, the Rwandan Green Bank plans to finance projects as early as 2024. According to UN figures, African countries need $2.8 trillion by 2030 to tackle climate change. Since 2020, only $264 billion has been mobilized, that is 10% of the total. The remaining $2.5 trillion will have to come from international and private sources. In 2009, rich countries pledged to increase their climate aid to developing countries to $100 billion a year by 2020. But this promise has remained unfulfilled. Against this backdrop, experts believe these green banks appear to be an innovative solution to the crucial need for climate funds, which continues to grow. So, are green banks a solution? To find out more, we welcome economist and president of FAFED, Samuel Maté. How can the financial sector in Africa be prepared for an economic transformation in the context of climate change? The finance sector in Africa, it must be well understood, is unfortunately still dominated by foreign funds and purely African private national banks. These banks are very poorly capitalized. So today, truly as a professor, I do not believe in purely African finance. I rather think that we have organizations managed by non-Africans on the continent, and these organizations impose a type of financing on us, aligning with current international interests. That's what's happening. We're now being told that everything we finance must be green. The question we ask is, who created this situation of pollution? It is not Africans. It is the Europeans with the Industrial Revolution with plenty of coal and oil. Moreover, the promises they make, they do not keep. They promised $100 billion to Africa per year, and that has never been given. Is the launch of specialized climate finance banks by five African countries an appropriate solution to the shortage of climate funds? Is this a good approach? Yes and no. Yes, because recently in Samoa, the agreement between the European Union and ACP countries was renewed as they set conditions for us to enter the market. At the same time, our leaders are weak. They do not dare to set conditions for Western companies to enter our markets. So we have no choice. But at the same time, I believe that the initiative of the 
five countries, namely Egypt, Morocco, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and Rwanda, should go beyond to bring about financial independence for Africa. Some experts believe that the private sector should find a market-based solution rather than relying on a new public institution for funding flows. What are your thoughts on this? They are absolutely right in the sense that, as I say, Africans are not the polluters. The polluters have taken advantage of pollution to develop, especially with the Industrial Revolution in England and later with the excessive use of fossil fuels. As I mentioned, Africa today accounts for less than 4% of global pollution. And when you establish a climate-friendly business, the costs are automatically higher than those of a business that operates in a non-climate-friendly manner. So your product will already be more expensive on the market. And that's a bit of the problem. That's why we ask Africa to work towards its financial independence and to have funds that can finance African businesses. Firstly, Africans themselves need to move more towards entrepreneurship, especially in French-speaking countries where people are more inclined towards the civil service. They also need to explore and conquer other markets. Samuel Maté, thank you for answering our questions. You're welcome. Goodbye. AgriShare is the name of an application that allows Ugandan farmers to use digital technology to ensure better yields. With just a smartphone, farmers have access to commercial or private rental services and more, as explained in the following report. Bingi Mathias is looking to hire workers on his avocado and coffee nursery. Young men available and willing to do this type of work are difficult to find in Luwero, a village in central Uganda. In order to save time and optimize his hiring process, Bingi uses AgriShare. The application connects him to potential employees. I couldn't get the workers by the time I started here. So uh, later on, I got into contact with the AgriShare. So I downloaded the AgriShare app and it helped me that much uh, to get the skilled labor. So you just go through the app, you follow the steps, uh, you follow the procedures very well, then money will be paid direct. You don't need to hold uh, cash to make payments. AgriShare seeks to help farmers make the most of tools offered by the digital economy to boost their productivity. In addition to hiring labor force, users can rent farm equipment on the app in a shared economy model. Adjustments are still underway, though, for the platform to be more accessible. Uh, when you look at our app, it has a provision where they ask you, are you booking for yourself, are you booking for a friend, or you're booking for a group of people. That was put there to help also a farmer who is not yet at that stage of using the platform on their own. Agriculture employs 70% of the working population in Uganda, making it the largest provider of employment in the country. With the rise of agri-tech in the region, farmers can now take advantage of digital technology to empower themselves. The second-hand car market in Morocco has a bright future. No less than 10,000 agencies operate in the car rental sector in Morocco, influencing the entire automotive ecosystem of the kingdom. Since the COVID-19 crisis, demand for used cars has risen sharply. This is due to the shortage of semiconductors and the disruption of value chains. Today in Morocco, buyers are increasingly turning to the second-hand market. The sector is flourishing with the emergence of structured operators. While structured players are emerging, Kifal Auto was one of the pioneers in this market. Since 2019, we have seen many players intervening in one or all of the used car value chain. We're talking about four times more in sales than the new car market. The new car market is about 160,000 to 180,000 vehicles a year, while the used car market is 500,000 sales. So it's a very dynamic market. 
The used car market is proving to be a vital partner to the new car market rather than a direct competitor. Increasingly popular for economic, ecological or practical reasons, used cars add value and offer consumers a wide range of options. It's not an industry that really competes with the new car industry. In fact, Morocco is the second country in Africa after South Africa in terms of new vehicle sales, so it's a very big market. But we're coming up with an offer that's more affordable for a whole range of consumers than buying a new vehicle and with more trust, transparency and quality of service than a direct transaction between private individuals. The growing demand for used cars is largely influenced by their quality. What's more, the players in this market offer not only efficient administrative services and rapid delivery, but also warranties extending up to a year. That's the end of this edition of Business Africa. You can watch and rewatch this episode on africanews.com and on all our digital platforms. See you next time. Business Africa was presented by Turkish Airlines.